Ensnared by Elliot By Megan J. Meehan Terrible Tuesdays Performed by Otis Jiry I am a distinguished professor. I am a dignified person. I have a doctorate. I am important in academic circles. Maxwell Davenport comforted himself with these thoughts as two snickering janitors unscrewed the plastic tunnel in a last-ditch effort to free him. Somewhere below he heard Elliot giggling obnoxiously, undoubtedly enjoying the scene. When Maxwell's wealthy sister, Audra, first adopted Elliot, a cherub-faced blonde, Maxwell assumed that she would hire a full-time nanny to look after him, just as their parents had done for them. Yet Elliot was an exceptionally difficult child. In a span of three years, he had defeated over two dozen nannies, leading Audra to decide that what the abominable child really needed was to form bonds with family members. At first, Maxwell balked. He knew nothing about children, and he was not technically related to Elliot. Moreover, Elliot was a dynamic little soul who spoke foul language and frequently dissolved into fits of rage. Yet Audra bribed her brother with the promise of funding his next trip to the Andes, an offer too generous for the cash-strapped anthropology department to pass up. And so, Maxwell accompanied the wretched child to Bobo's Burgers, a clown-themed fast-food restaurant that surely doubled as the gate to hell. Every second was torture, unappealing children screaming at impossibly high decibels, fatty foods, apathetic staff. The outing was an elaborate tapestry of disaster. Elliot demanded two large orders of french fries and a cheeseburger, then switched to chicken nuggets. He proceeded to spill his gigantic soda all over Maxwell's designer slacks before running into the play place, leaving his meal untouched. Then Maxwell was condemned to watch as Elliot invaded the ball pits and ran up and down the aisles, pushing and shoving other children the whole time, until the noise level reached an unbearable peak. Let's go, Elliot, Maxwell called in vain. Mommy's waiting. Elliot's response was a prolonged raspberry. Apparently, the stern tone that worked so effectively with graduate students had absolutely no effect on Elliot. In desperation, Maxwell entered the ball pit and grabbed for the boy. The child easily eluded him. Maxwell lost his balance and fell flat on his face. Everyone in the vicinity brayed laughter. Utterly humiliated, Maxwell righted himself just in time to see Elliot vanishing into a spiraled plastic tunnel, colored in an alarming shade of yellow. Foolishly, Maxwell followed, determined to put an end to the day's horrors. Tall, lanky Maxwell crawled into the narrow tube with great difficulty. Elliot was visible, scooting ahead of him, and turning around periodically to stick his tongue out and make the devil ears with his grubby little fingers. Now see here, young man, Maxwell shouted, his voice echoing through the enclosure. I've had enough of this, your naughty little gremlin. Elliot, totally unfazed, smirked and snorted as Maxwell inched closer and closer. Suddenly, Maxwell realized he couldn't move a muscle. He could not squirm forward nor maneuver backwards. He was completely lodged in place. Elliot, clearly pleased, chortled and disappeared around a corner, leaving Maxwell flailing about, kicking his feet and calling for assistance. Cruelly, he was at eye level with an opening in the tunnel, enabling him to look out at Elliot, who was happily hopping around in the ball pit, evidently having no intention of finding help. Several minutes later, which seemed like several hours, another child entered the Maxwell obstructed tunnel. After painfully pulling on his legs, viciously beating his ankles and shrieking, Move, old guy, move! repeatedly, the offending brat finally alerted the adults of Maxwell's plight. As the kid told the parents, and the parents told the staff, and the staff sent for the maintenance men. When the janitors... Arrived, they ordered everyone out, which resulted in Elliot pitching a flamboyant tantrum. 
In further testament to the unfairness of life, Elliot was awarded for his atrocious behavior with a complimentary set of action hero toys intended to keep him quiet as he was let out of the play place. Maxwell was eventually freed, but not without infamy. Someone had recorded the event on their cell phone, and the video was subsequently posted on YouTube. Maxwell later learned that the damning film was quite popular among his students. That evening, as Maxwell literally dragged a screeching Elliot home, he decided to discuss the importance of tradition with Audra. Namely, the boarding school tradition.